Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. So there's a, a video that I watched about this particular presenter here up in Adam talking about the proof of one plus one, obviously a load of garbage. And I mentioned it in a previous video of mine, but somebody made a comment here. Somebody called the Paldor. He says, I think going through some of the mainstream nonsense videos <clears throat> to show the issues could actually be pretty cool and get views. Yeah without endless insults, but just calling a spade a spade. So I'm about to try that now. <laughs> so I, I just started scrolling down. I, since I couldn't find the 359 pages again uh, quickly, I, I, I went from why math is important to uh, the homepage, and I saw that she discusses Aristotle's wheel paradox Okay, in this video. So what she says, uh, very briefly, and I'll play it for you, uh, starting from here. And then I'll show you why she is wrong about so many things. The differently sized wheel. But then you notice something interesting. There is actually a smaller circle inside the larger wheel, which seems to have traveled the same amount. So does that mean it has the same circumference? Okay, so that's the part I'm going to address right now. There are a lot of issues with the rest of the video too, but uh, I'll address that part now. So it's very misleading because what does traveling the same amount mean? Okay, what does that even mean? So she first sets up a straw man argument about the smaller circle having a smaller circumference. And therefore, it is strange that it traveled the same amount. Well, I don't, we don't know what that means. So, you know, travel the same amount. I think the closest you can get in to it is saying that it rotated. It did one complete rotation. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean it traveled the same amount. I mean, if you had uh, planet Earth and planet Jupiter, and there are the equators, and they each rotated once, they haven't traveled the same amount, okay? So she's setting up a, a straw man argument there. And um, then she later on, she dives straight into the utter nonsense of George Cantor's bijective cardinality and implies that somehow infinity has something to do with the entire process of each circle covering the same distance, which is false, by the way, and that's the premise of her straw man argument. And she uses the word intuition which, by the way, you should never use if you're a smart person because intuition has no place in rational thought. So throughout her, quote, brilliant presentation, she fails to mention what it means to even measure the path. So she, she first of all, you know, draws uh, the circle. So here we go. She, she, she draws the lens and she talks about measuring it, but she doesn't, she doesn't really say what it means to measure the path. Okay, so it doesn't mean you take a, a measuring tape. She says there are no measuring tape or anything like that. So what on earth does it mean to measure the path? So had she explained that the diameter of the larger and smaller circle act as an abstract unit, then measure might have made sense. So I'm going to post this comment with a link to my video. She's obviously not going to publish it, but that's okay. And before I sign off, uh, here's where she starts getting into Cantor's drivel of bijective cardinality, you see. And, and so suddenly she starts talking about number of points, which is, it's, it's a totally garbage uh, phrase because you can't count points, okay? You can only count well-formed or well-defined location, locations, okay? So in one of my... <clears throat> prize articles called is the real number line real i explain why you can't count points and that that if you that if you do you have to be able to reify those points and i'll place a link to that article in the details section so she carries on and she goes into uh, a whole lot of uh, explanation about Cantor's drivel never even addressing the first topic which she first started which is why for example uh, do they have the, do, do both the circles complete the same rotation? Well, that's actually very simple to answer. Circles 
are in proportion to each other. And they have a small circle uh, that has the same center as a larger circle will complete one rotation or any number of rotations, the same number of rotations, rotations as a circle around it. So basically she sets up a, a, a strawman argument with a lot of hand waving arguments, uh, hand waving uh, terminology like intuition, you know, which doesn't mean anything and then covering the same distance or, or uh, traveling the same amount. And of course, let, let's look at what some of her, uh, oh, here's a neat comment. It says, what's so complicated? The smaller circle is further from the point of contact. So it has less distance to travel to reach the same destination. Okay, but this guy knows that what she's saying is not true, but he hasn't mentioned why. Okay, in other words, it rotates just once. So, um, but let's look at some of the comments she gets here. She's pretty, so he, the first one says, but you changed the icon profile. Pic. What garbage is that? Okay. Um, so she's obviously English because she, she talks using an English accent. And uh, I mean, you know, these comments, sometimes they can become really absurd, but not to waste too much time on these. Oh, here's somebody, here's somebody who makes a, an interesting comment. That was too easy. Now I explain the continuum hypotheses and how it relates to the action of choice. So this poor, this poor fool, uh, thinks that he understood what she said and that he's going to dive into something that is a lot more profound. So, uh, yeah, so they fool around with her and nobody really understands what's going on. And it says the number after zero is one times 10 to the power of minus infinity. Well, anyway, so not to waste time. <clears throat> That's my first attempt at correcting uh, other videos, but notice people, notice people that she has, she has 2.6 million views and she started three years ago. My channel is older than that and I don't even have 3000 subscribers. She already has close to a million, which means she, she probably earns pretty good money every month. I'd say at least between 10 to $20,000 a month on ads. And people just watch this crap and they click like. I, I disliked it because it's garbage. It doesn't teach anyone anything, frankly. It uh, Its main goal is to obfuscate and confuse rather than to elucidate and help one to understand. So if you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber to my channel. Click like and follow me on academia.edu. And hopefully I'll be chatting with you soon again with the next video in What is Time. I'm John Gabriel. This is New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.